So in this video, I'm going to share with you guys my top 10 favorite house plans of 2018. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time we're meeting, my name is Christian, also known as the Crazy Plant Guy. I mostly do plant videos on this channel, so if you have not hit that subscribe button, be sure to do it. Also follow me on Instagram at Crazy Plant Guy. So yesterday when I was cleaning my place, I decided to count all my plants, and right now I have about 98 of them. I had more a couple months ago, but I remembered I gave them away to a local plant swap, so uh, I only have 98, but with that said, I also wanted to figure out which of these guys would be in my top 10 favorite house plants. So I thought about it last night, and I figured, you know what, let's do a video for you guys. So we'll do a countdown of my top 10 favorite plants. We'll start with the number 10. 10, which is the ta-da the ZZ plant so this guy uh, I actually just posted this guy on my Instagram today and uh, the reason why I like this guy is I think he is underrated first of all but he is so easy to care for and he's strikingly beautiful uh, obviously you guys know he's got these uh, very cool foliage kind of shiny and uh, almost looks fake at times but uh, yeah I love this guy so I think every plant enthusiast or beginners needs to have one of these guys. Coming in at number nine, it is the, ta-da, the Pothos. So this one is the silver satin. You'll notice he has these silver speckles that has a bit of shine to it. And uh, the one thing about Pothos, you guys will know, is they do grow really, really fast. They are trailing plants easy to care for and uh, they have a few varieties of them. Uh, this one is obviously my latest one. I also have the Enjoy, the Marble Queen and the Neon Potho. So if you were to ask me which of those four is my favorite right now, I cannot choose one because I love all of them equally. But yeah, this guy is my number nine uh, favorite houseplant. Coming in at number eight, it is the, uh, the prayer plant. This one in particular is the lemon lime. And uh, you guys know prayer plants are part of the Marantasia family. Did I say that correctly? I don't think I did. Uh, but they are known to have their leaves fold up at nighttime and fold down during the day. You can see this guy's a little bit fold down. And uh, again, they are have a striking foliage that you see here. And the red prayer plant is also a very popular one. It's quite more common than this one, but uh, I love this particular plant. Uh, they are a little tricky for uh, some people to care for, but for me, I find them really easy. As long as I keep their soil uh, evenly moist, uh, I never let them dry up, and as long as you miss them uh, once a week they should be good and these guys can thrive in uh, low to medium light so again if you don't have one of these uh, be sure to get one so coming in at number seven it is the ta-da the Pelia peperomiotis so if you guys are familiar with my videos, you'll know that I've had this guy uh, for almost a year now and uh, you know, he's been good to me since I've gotten him. He was obviously a lot smaller than that. If you guys are wondering how he looked or how to care for this guy, I did do a video of that so be sure to check that out. I'll provide a link in the description or click the card in the corner. And uh, you know, the one thing about this guy as well is, you know, as long as I give him a lot of bright light and I water him when he is dry using filtered water, uh, he will do well. I mean, he's in a self-facing window, so uh, he prefers that. And his babies that you see here, they can easily be propagated as well. So, uh, you know, you can share this with your friends, uh, which is what I'm gonna do with these guys. Also, if you're wondering where I got this uh, propagation station, I'll provide a link in the description below because I keep getting asked where I got him. So if you want one, be sure to check that link out. So yeah, this is my number seven uh, favorite houseplant. So coming in at number six, it is the, ta-da, the San Siberia whale fin, or shark fin, whatever you want to call this guy. But uh, this guy is my favorite, uh, San Siberia, obviously, but he comes in at number six. And uh, that's because uh, you guys know snake plants are so easy to care for. Uh, they require little watering and uh, you know they can thrive in any lighting condition. But you know, I keep this guy uh, usually in the medium to uh, bright light. But uh, he's so cool, you know, so simple, yet he makes such a big statement. So uh, this guy is one of my favorites. Uh, obviously, he made it 
he made a top 10 cut coming in at number six. So now at number five, it is the, ta-da, the spider plant. So if you guys are familiar with my Instagram account, you'll know that this guy is a popular house plant of mine. And uh, obviously there is a reason why. First of all, they are easy to care for. And uh, you know, they mean a lot to me because growing up, my grandpa had a lot of spider plants. So uh, this was my childhood plant. On top of that, you guys can see this guy shoots out a lot of babies and he just looks so cool with them. And uh, yeah, everyone keeps asking me how I get this guy. I'm gonna put him down because he's freaking heavy. So I often get the question, how do I get this guy to shoot off a lot of babies? And honestly, I don't do anything different other than giving him a lot of bright indirect light, watering him when he is dry, and uh, keeping him in this eight inch pot that he's been in for over a year now. And I think spider plants love to be root bound. So I think that's what's helping him shoot out a lot of babies. But uh, again, you know, when it comes to the babies, they are so easy to propagate. You just snip them off. You can propagate them in water to grow a bit more roots, or you can plant them directly in the soil already. I'm actually gonna give this guy a bit of a haircut soon, and I'm probably gonna give the babies uh, to a few coworkers at the office as a way of me saying thank you, and also obviously spreading the plant love, uh, so that way everyone has plants, because everyone should have plants. I'm just kidding. But uh, coming in at number four, it is the, ta-da, the rubber plant. So you guys can see why this is in my top 10 favorite house plants coming in at number four. He's slowly been climbing up the ring since I got this guy. Uh, obviously this one's the variegated kind. I also have the um, uh, burgundy as well as the ruby one. But uh, this one is so cool because his leaves just look like you know, watercolor art has been splattered on it. And uh, they grow pretty quickly as well, as long as you give him a lot of bright indirect light and uh, water him when he is dry. But uh, yeah, the rubber plant's so cool. If you guys are wondering how to care for this guy, I also did do a video of uh, rubber plants, so be sure to check that out. I'll provide a link in the description below. So coming in at number three, or we're gonna get to my top three. And uh, this one was tough for me because it kept bouncing around, which ended up being my number one, two, and three. Even this guy, I thought you know he would be my number three spot, but you know after thinking about it, I'm gonna put this guy number four. And uh, here we go with our top three. We'll start with the guy coming in at number three. It is the ta-da, the string of hearts. So you guys can see why this has become a favorite houseplant of many people, and obviously he's my number three spot. Uh, this is my largest one right now. I don't even know how long his longest string is, but he's nearly touching the floor. And the one thing about string of hearts that I've learned uh, since having them is they are kind of tricky to care for depending on uh, obviously the, the age or the size of your string of hearts. So I found that the younger they are or the smaller ones, they tend to obviously need a little bit more watering. Part of it is because they're in a smaller container, the soil dries up quicker. Um, so this guy I water every two weeks. Well, this guy I water every three weeks and uh, they don't need to be watered often like your regular house plant, like a spider plant or uh, a pelia. Um, you know, if you have own Hoyas, they're very similar uh, on how you care for them. And again, I also did a propagation video on how to care for these guys, so be sure to check that out. Um, but once they start growing, they grow super fast and they grow really, really long as well. So you can easily uh, propagate these guys in water by uh, you know, obviously taking a clipping, uh, removing some of the leaves to create a node, and then uh, putting them in water. But yeah, this guy is my number three favorite house plant. So coming in at number two, or number one, again, I debated about these guys really hard and uh, you know, honestly, there is a number one, number two. I like, I like all my plants, okay? All top 10 of them are my number one plant, just to be clear, but uh, these two I struggled with, but um, I don't know. Okay, we'll start with number two, and you guys can agree or disagree with me, uh, which is uh, fine as well, but uh, and coming in at number two, it is the, ta-da, the Monstera. Uh, so this guy is the Monstera that I got from Walmart over a year ago. And uh, you can see how huge he is now. But uh, yeah, this guy started my uh, obsession with tropical houseplants for sure. Uh, when I found him, you know, I've always wanted one. And when I finally got this guy, I was so happy. Uh, he's grown quite a bit since I got him. And I can put him down because he's heavy. He is actually uh, featured in my first ever houseplant video I ever did uh, back in September. So, you know, if you are wondering how small he was then, be sure to check that video out. But uh, again, the Monstera is a favorite houseplant of many people. It is one of the most popular houseplants right now. And uh, you can tell because, you know, a couple years ago, these guys were uh, cheaper to buy. Now they are really expensive. So if you can get a cutting from a friend, be sure to get one. 
but uh, if you don't have one, you know, try and get one because these guys are so cool to have. Uh, obviously, they're known for the split leaves as well as holes in the leaves depending on how mature your plant is. And uh, this guy I care for pretty easily. I keep him uh, obviously getting a lot of bright light. Um, no direct sunlight because this guy will burn if you give him direct sunlight and I water him only when his soil is dry and I make sure I rotate the guy as well so that way he kind of grows full um, and even but you know he can grow whichever way he wants I don't care he'll still look beautiful as ever so that is my number two slash number one house plan so the next one I'm going to show you guys is also my number two slash number one house plan uh, this guy is cool as well so it is the the bird of paradise so you guys can see how beautiful this guy is his leaves are so huge uh, I love the way he grows uh, quite symmetrically as well so hold on I'm gonna put him down because he's heavy so one of the reasons why I love the bird of paradise similar to the monstera deliciosa or the rubber tree is he gives off that tropical vibe feel that I want in my home and uh, sometimes I wish I lived somewhere warmer or more in the tropics so I can watch these guys grow in their natural environment with the bird of paradise you know, if grown in their natural environment, they will produce these flowers, which are so cool. I don't think I'm ever gonna see one from this guy, but that's okay, you know, as long as he grows nice, tall, and healthy. Him being this green is beautiful enough already, so that works for me. And uh, the other thing about the bird of paradise as well is, you know, they can stand a lot of uh, bright light and even a few hours of direct sunlight. That's actually how I get this guy to grow really tall is uh, in the summer, I put him outside and I put him really close to the window as well when he's indoors. And I just water him when uh, his soil is about 90% dry. I never let this guy uh, uh, go 100% dry. But uh, yeah, that is my top 10 favorite houseplants. You know, I, I probably could have done a top 15 or top 20, and I'm sure this list will change by next month, but now if you guys think there were other houseplants that should have made this list, be sure to comment below. Also, if you guys have any other comments, questions about any of the plants, let me know and I'll try and get to them as soon as I can. Other than that, hopefully you guys enjoy your weekend, and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.